is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. You'll be able to uh, um, to uh, to see uh, the uh, the recording of the webinar if uh, if you'd like. Um, and we will also send you the uh, the slide deck. Um, so you'll have a copy of uh, a copy of these slides and uh, and my notes. We'll get that out to you uh, within the next uh, with probably within the next day or so. Um, second, um, my colleague Kyle is going to be monitoring the questions. So if you have some questions during the webinar, feel free to uh, type them in the question section, and uh, Kyle will get back to you. We'll answer them. Um, and I will stick around at the end of the webinar if you want to uh, to uh, to ask me anything. So uh, that's uh, that's my preliminaries. Let's uh, let's dive in and uh, talk a little about about uh, customizing Meco graphics. So a uh, couple things that uh, that I'm going to cover today. It's going to be just half an hour, so uh, um, we don't want to cover cover a lot of stuff. Um, probably uh, the most common question I get is how do I take my corporate colors and uh, apply them to the charts that I'm creating. So I will walk you through the general notion of color palettes in Meco Graphics and how to use uh, how to use Meco Graphics to uh, to create a uh, a custom color palette. Um, I will also show you how to customize other parts of Meco Graphics with the Meco Graphics Preference Manager, uh, number formats, fonts, margins, uh, line styles. So we will uh, we will work through uh, we will work through those as well. And if you've got, like I said, if you've got specific questions on customization that uh, that you'd like me to answer, feel free to uh, to uh, uh, ask them, and I will uh, I will get back to you about that. So uh, that's where we're going. Um, we will be working with the Meco Graphics Preference Manager, which is right here in the Meco Graphics ribbon in PowerPoint, right here. This uh, this Preference Manager button. Um, and at a high level, uh, the preference manager has really two parts to it. One is uh, setting colors uh, in different palettes. So we have the you have the ability to use multiple multiple color palettes, and those color palettes control all the colors in the chart, the colors that draw in um, in the chart segments, but also the line colors. Um, the colors in the Gantt charts, um, all of those things are, are controlled in colors. And non-color settings are controlled in the, in the settings tab here. And because Gantt's are, uh, have their own set of, uh, of, uh, um, set of features, we added a separate tab for, uh, for the Gantt charts as well. So that's, uh, that's what we'll, uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be going through. And, uh, to get you started, I will uh, I will try to answer that uh, that first question. How do I take my corporate colors and apply them to uh, to Meco graphics charts? Um, I have those corporate colors in a PowerPoint theme file or in a PowerPoint file, and I want to use those colors in the Meco graphics chart. So let me uh, let me show you that. I uh, uh, as an example, I went out uh, to the web and I found. Uh, uh, Microsoft's uh, uh, results presentation from the last quarter in a PowerPoint presentation. So uh, I just wanted to show you what PowerPoint saves with respect to colors so that you understand sort of what Meco graphics use as a starting point for, uh, can use as a starting point for color palettes. So uh, in this uh, uh, Microsoft presentation, if you go to the design tab, of any presentation, you go to the design tab, and over here, on um, on the uh, right hand side, you can see colors, and you can see different options for color palettes for your uh, for your uh, uh, presentation, and you can also click on this customize color button, which will show you the default colors that PowerPoint saves with any presentation, and you can see that they save about ten colors, so two. Uh, two text colors, light and dark, six accent colors, a hyperlink, and a followed hyperlink color. So these are the colors PowerPoint uses as a start, and these are the colors that will appear along with shades if you say insert a text box into a, a slide. Oops. Type some text in, and 
right click, uh, click on the text, uh, type some text in uh, that is a word. Um, and then you can see all the colors that are based on those, uh, um, those theme colors show up in this little uh, drop down. So that's where they, uh, that's where they come from. So let me go back to my presentation. And what I'm going to do is create a, a, a Meco Graphics color palette based on those Microsoft corporate colors. So I will click on the Preference Manager here. And it will uh, load up in a minute. There we go. Um, and to add a new color palette in the Preference Manager, I'm on the Themes Color Palettes tab. I just click on New. And now I've got a blank. Meco Graphics starts with a set of base whites and blacks and grays. We need those just to, to basically draw any chart. Um, but the key here is I want to add some colors from a file. And I want to add some colors from a PowerPoint file, a PPTX file, and I want to take those base colors, those base 10 colors in that PPTX file, add some shades to them so I've got a little more variety, and use that as a basis for my color palette. So I'll click on PPT file with extra shades. Uh, oops. Wait one second, I forgot to do one thing, which is gonna mess me up if I don't do that. I need to close this file before I start playing with it. Let me go back here, go back to my preference manager. Sorry about that little delay. New, add colors from theme with extra shades. I click on that Microsoft file. I say open, and here it does. It adds to my color palette all of those, those 10 colors and shades based on those colors. So I took each color and we went from, you know, 50% darker to that, for that color down to 80% lighter to that color. So all of these will now appear, all of these colors will now appear in, uh, in Meco Graphics, when you right click on an element and you can change to, uh, to any of these colors. If you want to delete some of these colors, if they're redundant, you can just go and delete them by clicking, by selecting one and clicking the delete button. Um, but right now, let me leave them all here. And then what I need to do next is create what we call a draw order. And this is really critical to Meco Graphics. The draw order are, is the order in which uh, colors are used in your new chart. So if I say my first series in my new chart will be this blue, we call accent one. My second series will be accent two. My third series will be this gray, accent three. Then the yellow mustard, then the other blue, then the green. And if I stopped here, then if I had drawn a new chart with seven uh, colors, then with seven series, then the seventh series would circle back to this blue. If I want to keep going, I can add colors, say, well, I want to make my next set lighter. I'll start with, uh, um, I'll start with the blue, maybe a little lighter, and then I'll add a lighter green. And you see, you get the idea. I can add as many colors as I want here. And when I stop adding colors, uh, they will start repeating. I need to do the same for lines. I can say, well, I want my first line to be yellow, my second blue, my third green, my fourth line now would repeat yellow. And then I can save this as Microsoft Colors. and click Save As. And now you see in the Preference Manager, under the Custom Colors, I've got this new one that says Microsoft Colors. If I click this button, it will show in my UI. And if I say Set as Default, it will be the default color for, uh, for my new charts.
So let me do that. And I will click OK. Give myself a new slide. Add a new stacked bar chart. And you can see it's got those uh, Microsoft colors in there. If I add more series, you can see the colors would be there. And I think one more, two more, and they'll start repeating. Yes, you can see that's the first color. Again, repeating at, uh, at series nine, because I had eight colors in my, uh, in my chart. So um, very easy to start with a, with a PowerPoint file and create your own uh, custom palette. If you want, you can create more than one custom palette. Uh, sometimes I find it nice to have a palette with a few, a few colors for simple charts, maybe five, four, five, six colors, and then a, uh, a more, um, uh, then, then maybe a chart, then maybe a palette with maybe 20 or 30 colors. If I'm making a more complex uh, Marameco chart, maybe in that chart, I will group all the blues together, starting from dark to light, and then maybe all the oranges starting from dark to light. Um, and that way I've got a bigger palette and I can differentiate among a larger number of, uh, of series in my chart. So um, very easy to do, create that palette, set it as your default, use it, uh, use it in your charts. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you, just another way to make a palette, another use for a palette, was a question we got from, uh, from another uh, customer. Um, they said, well, we're a conglomerate. Our, uh, each of our divisions has its own color palette. We want all of them to be using Meco graphics. We want them all to be able to uh, use their colors in, uh, in, our, uh, in our charts. Um, uh, we also see this with uh, uh, companies that make a lot of Marameco charts and they have the same set of competitors and they always want to assign each competitor the same color. So we want to add some colors to a palette um, and use them and apply them to different divisions or, uh, or, different, uh, or different competitors. So uh, I will uh, show you how to do that as well. I'm going to go back to Meco Graphics, go back to my Preference Manager. And now what I'm going to do is start with one of my existing uh, color palettes. I'm going to start with my Shades of Gray palette. So, um, and I'm going to edit that palette. So this palette here has a basically um, 10 shades of gray and it's going to start, your first series is going to be the darkest and it's going to go through to the lightest and that'll be the default applied to, uh, to your new charts. And say I want to add my division colors to this palette. So I can just say new and say division one. Division one's color is a red and we know it's RGB and I would just type it in here. But to save uh, the trouble of typing the RGB, I'm just going to uh, choose a red here and let's say division one's colors, uh, division one's color is 216, 43, 37. We'll call it division one. We'll save it. And we can do the same with uh, division two. We can make that a blue. And we can say OK and save that. And I'll do one more. I'll do a green for division three and say OK. And then let me call this um, gray with div for gray with division colors. Save as. So now it's up here. I want to show this in my UI and maybe even make this my default palette for, uh, for moving forward. So now I click OK. I can put in a new slide, add a Marameco chart. And now we'll call that div one, two, three, and four. Say close. Now, if I want to apply the div one color to div one, 
I can just click in series here. And then in my palette, if I mouse over, you can see that red, it says div one on it. So I can just apply that here and div two, I can do the same mouse over and apply the blue and div three, apply the green. So relatively straightforward, uh, create those division colors, add it to a palette. Um, if you wanna create a draw order, um, you can do that or you can start with the grays or the blues or whatever you want and use that as your default and then add these colors, uh, add these colors on top of that. So that's my uh, um, um, quick introduction to colors. Let me just show you a couple of other things with respect to colors, just so you know, uh, you know how they work and where they are. Um, so I will edit this gray with div palette. And you can see we have, we needed the draw orders for the lines, which I did in the other palette. And then we also have the ability to customize other colors here. So if you want your chart border instead of black, which it is here to be white or gray, you can do that. You can uh, um, change the default color for your average lines or any of the other lines on your chart. You can change the default color for your axes or axis breaks. Um, so all of that is uh, palette specific and customizable in the preference manager. So again, we are with the, in this gray with div palette. So any of these color changes are only going to apply to the palette that you're using to create the chart. They're not going to apply to all of your charts, only the charts created with, uh, with the palette that you've chosen. And also we have all the Gantt colors here. So you've got a bunch of different options for colors for Gantt. So I just wanted to show you that to make sure you had a full sense of all the colors that you can work with uh, in Meco Graphics. So that's colors. I think you've had enough of colors. Um, the other things you can customize in Meco Graphics are in this settings tab. Um, and there are a bunch of settings that uh, um, I would recommend you look at and seriously think about, uh, about customizing. Others I think uh, um, are, we find it rare that uh, that our customers will change them. Um, but we have them here um, anyway, in case you do need them. So first thing, probably the most common thing that uh, our customers want to customize is font size. Um, font size in charts, people are very passionate about it, almost as passionate as about colors. Um, some people like to have Meco graphics charts where the font sizes vary. This is especially true if you make a lot of Meco charts uh, because the segment sizes vary and you wanna try to squeeze the labels into the different segments. So we're sort of set up as default for that. Our defaults are start at a font size of 12, go down to a font size of eight to try to fit things in. And if they don't fit as eight, place it at seven. Um, if you wanted all of your charts to always be the same font size, I would just go back in here and say, well, let's make all of my fonts, all of my charts always come out as 10 at the start. So I'm gonna change my maximum, minimum, and minimum smart place font size all to 10. So now, no matter how big or small my chart segments are, all the fonts in my new charts will come in at 10. So that's one thing that I see people, uh, probably the thing that people change the most. Um, after font size, we also have the ability to change font style. Uh, I would recommend you not do this, but you can if you want. So the, the Meco Graphics default is to use the PowerPoint theme font. So we look at your PowerPoint presentation, we look in your list of fonts, we look at the uh, body font uh, from your PowerPoint theme, and that's the font that we will use for your, uh, for your Meco Graphics charts. If you want all your charts to always be the same font, no matter what PowerPoint theme file you use in your presentation, you would just click off this and say, well, I want all of my, font, all of my charts 
in all of my fonts from now on to always be Calibri. Um, now all new all new charts will come in uh, will come in Calibri. Um, chart margins are also worth uh, worth looking at. We give very very generous chart margins as default. Some of our customers want their charts by default to uh, uh, have less white space around it. Um, you can just adjust the chart margins here. Uh, we give you the main ones here, but you can show all of the chart margins here if you want and adjust them here. And if you mess up, we always have restore defaults. And you can set your chart margins for the normal layout and also the narrow layout. So those two things are useful. Um, the other thing that we often see people change is uh, make my y-axis vertical instead of horizontal if you want, make it top tick aligned, in which case it will line up with the left-hand side, in this case, of the one in the 100%. So it's gonna line up with the left-hand side of, your, of the top tick mark in your y-axis chart. Um, and here also, do I use units or currency on all of my y-axis or just on the top one? So a top only, I think, is the default. So those three things, I think, are the main things that people change. We do have a bunch of other things here. Um, which you can look at if you want. Um, in this tab, in this next tab here, we have all of the line styles, not the line colors, but the line styles. So here you can adjust the thickness of the different lines in your chart. And we've grouped them together. So if you want all your axis related lines, they're, they're set to 1.5, but if you want them thinner at one, you can change them here or you can go in and change individual ones. Um, we also have series lines, borders, all of those things are changeable both in line thickness and in also in line style. And if you mess up again, you've got restored defaults here. In the latest version of Mecco Graphics, I don't know if anyone has noticed this, uh, but in older versions of Mecco Graphics, when you shrunk a chart, um, then the fonts shrunk and the line um, the line um, the line thickness is also shrunk. Um, in the current version of Mecco Graphics, we preserve font size and we preserve line thickness by default when you shrink or grow a chart. So all of these lines, all of your charts will have the same line thickness, whether they're big or small. That was a request from, uh, from some of our customers. If you don't like that, um, you can let us know and we can, uh, change some settings and revert Mecco graphics back to the way it uh, the way it used to behave. So we've got these here, um, the line style settings, and we also have a bunch of Gantt settings, Gantt margins, um, Gantt default layouts, Gantt font size, Gantt border width, um, uh, what the first day of the week is, do we take it from the system or is it always Sunday or Monday? What days are weekend days? Uh, which can be useful in different uh, in different parts of the world. What uh, um, what we have for default bullets for level two and level three, and default level of indentation. So uh, you do also have a lot of control over your uh, um, over your um, Gantt charts as well. So that's my quick tour of uh, of the preference manager and all the things that you can uh, change and work with in the preference manager. I'm going to click OK just to save my changes. And then the last thing I want to show you is, well, now that I've made these changes, how do I apply them to, uh, to existing Mecco graphics charts? So here, here is a, an existing Mecco graphics chart, a good, place, uh, a good place to start. So if I double click on this chart, nothing changes. Which is, a, which is a good thing. That's the way we like it. Um, so a couple of things you can do now in Mecco Graphics to uh, update this to reflect a new color palette. One is, um, if I go back to the colors here, we added this in the latest version of Mecco Graphics. We added this Reset Colors button here at the bottom of the Colors menu. And this Reset Colors button will take all of the custom colors that you apply to this chart. In this case, I made Vodafone red uh, just to have it stand out. So if I click reset colors, it will take the Vodafone 
and apply the um, apply its default color rather than its custom color. So if you want to apply a new color palette, the first thing I might do is do um, reset colors to get all my colors back to their default colors. And then I can go here and say, well, I want this to be in the Microsoft colors instead of the, uh, the modern colors that I'm using in this chart. So I'll click Microsoft colors and it will, it will adapt to that, uh, to that Microsoft color palette. So very easy to change your palette, move from one to another just by uh, first doing reset colors and then, um, and then apply the, uh, uh, the color palette. So um, the other thing, the other th way to change the look of your chart, just gonna undo this, is to uh, double click Again, I want to, uh, first I'm gonna reset my colors because by default, Neko Graphics won't touch colors that you've changed manually. So I will reset the colors here. And then we have this other button called Apply Preference Manager Settings. This will not only change the color palette, but it will also change any other settings in your preference manager that are different change to the settings in your preference manager that are different than the, the, than the settings that came with this chart. So if you got this chart from a consulting firm and you wanna put it in your colors or um, um, you've changed corporate and you wanna put it in your font and all of that stuff, then apply preference manager settings will make that, will make all of those updates with just this one, uh, this one button click. So it, uh, it adapted to my default colors, which are the grays and my default font sizes uh, as well. So all of that, again, with, uh, with just one click. So to, uh, to change your charts, use either use a different color palette here or use the apply to change just the color palette or use the apply preference manager settings to, uh, to change the color palette and all of the fonts and all the other settings you uh, you changed in your uh, in your preference manager. So that's my tour. Um, I think I've uh, shown you uh, how you can customize Meco Graphics to make the charts look better, um, to make the charts look better more quickly. Um, so you don't have to go in and manually change colors of charts. You don't have to manually go in and choose RGBs for different uh, for different uh, colors. Um, if you're making a lot of charts or you want to apply a corporate standard, then I hope these tips and tricks will, uh, will, help, you, uh, will help you get there. Um, if you find this complex and you need some help from me or one of my colleagues to create a new color palette or adjust your preference manager settings, feel free to, uh, to contact me. I've got my email here uh, or contact our support team and we're happy to uh, we're happy to help with uh, with that. Um, plus, we've got um, videos on our website. Like I said, I will put this uh, this video up on our site. We've got some short videos on our site, including a a short uh, I think a ten minute preference manager video, um, which could be uh, could be helpful as well. We also have a great uh, ninety minute training video if you're new to Meco Graphics to help you uh, to help you get started. Um, and if you don't know about our chart gallery, I would definitely recommend that, uh, that you check it out. We've got over 200 charts in it. Very easy to uh, download and customize those charts. Should give you some good ideas about how to take the data that you have and turn it into, uh, uh, into a chart that, uh, that can work for you. Um, also check out our blogs. Um, my favorite chart of the week um, gives you a new chart. Every week you can subscribe to it. Um, we try to make them topical. We try to make them interesting. We try to, to highlight some of the features in Meco Graphics in the charts. Plus we have a uh, how-to blog called Build Your CQ. Um, plus we have on uh, the ability, very easy, if you've got questions about Meco Graphics, um, we have this ask an expert in the Meco Graphics ribbon. You can send us an email. We'll, uh, we'll answer your charting questions. And if you've got more of a support question, we've got this email support button 
which uh, will uh, attach some diagnostics to our uh, presentation, uh, to your uh, email, and send uh, send the diagnostics along with uh, um, along with your question. Um, the other, the one thing, if you are going to send us a question, I would strongly encourage you to send your PowerPoint along with the question, so we can take a look and see what you've done, and maybe give you some advice about uh, how to do things uh, differently. So. I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank you all for um, for uh, listening to me and for using our software. I will stick around for a few minutes, and uh, if there are any questions, um, I will be available uh, uh, to answer them. Great. Well, thanks again so much, and uh, I look forward to uh, to helping you out with uh, any charting needs moving forward. Take care.